Example 166, Tech. Using a 1% significance level and the computer output below, test the claim that there is a positive linear relationship between a mother's height and her daughter's height. Okay, so let's start with the claim. If I want to state the claim, first of all, how do I know it's a hypothesis test? Because of course they're saying test the claim. And they're talking about this positive linear relationship, so I know it's a hypothesis test about the slope parameter, right? So I'm going to say basically that I want to test the claim that the slope beta 1 is greater than 0. So there's no hat on this beta 1 because it's the population beta 1 value, right? The theoretical true slope. And we're testing the claim that that relationship is positive, so positive means greater than 0. And a positive relationship just means that taller mothers will generally produce taller daughters. That's the idea, right? Okay, so there's your claim. We can then express the HO and HA associated with this claim. So of course HO would be that beta 1 is less than or equal to 0, right? And then HA would be the same as the claim because it has that greater than symbol, right? Which is one of HA symbols. So we'll just say beta 1 greater than 0 for HA. Okay, so we have our claim, we have our HO, we have our HA. The next step of the process is to copy down some data. Well, we don't need to work with the data here that they've actually given us because we've already run it through Minitab and produced output, and that's below, so we'll scroll down to see that in a minute. I do want to make mention, though, that the significance level in the problem, it says it's 1%. So let me just write that down because that's going to be important. So alpha is equal to 0.01. Okay, let's scroll down and look at that computer output then. All right, so let's take a look at this computer output. The first thing you see is an ANOVA output from Minitab. And actually, we can go here to get the answer to the question we're looking for. They actually provide p-values here, you notice. And they're doing that for both regression and mother's height. You'll actually notice that the two rows are exactly the same. And they're exactly the same here for a reason, because they're just labeling that output in two different ways, right? So in this particular case, for this simple linear regression equation, Regression is going to be basically a test of the slope to see if the model is significant and that answer for the p-value is the same as if we tested our slope to see if it was significant. Likewise for mother's height it's the same thing. Mother's height is the name that they've given our slope variable here and basically again it has the same exact p-value because they're really doing the same test. For simple linear regression like we're dealing with in chapter 11 that will always be the case. Now the other place you can see the information is if you scroll down below they actually, again, have this kind of listing of the coefficients for the model. So they'll have mother's height here, which is our slope variable. And then they give you a p-value for it. And again, you can see it's exactly the same p-value that they had up here, or p-values, plural, that they had up here. So again, they're testing that slope to see if it's significant. And if you had any doubt that the slope variable was mother's height, they have the equation expressed down here. And you can see again that this is the piece that they're using for the slope, right? So we have our y-intercept for the equation plus the coefficient for slope, right? The slope estimator, 0.695. And then they have the x variable, which is mother's height. And uh, again, as I mentioned, the computer will automatically name the coefficient for the slope the same name as the measurement that goes into x, right? So in this case, mother's height is being used to predict daughter's height, which is the y variable here in the equation. Okay, but either way, it's, it's really simple then to see the result of our hypothesis test. So all we have to do here is to see if the slope is significant given its p-value and the significance level. Well, the p-value, remember, was about 0 0.058. And that, of course, is greater than the alpha, which is only 0.01. And so what this indicates is that we cannot reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the slope is not significant. That means the slope is not significantly different from zero, right? So we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and that means we cannot support the alternative hypothesis. And if we can't support the alternative hypothesis, and that is our claim, then we're saying we what? We cannot support the claim. So we cannot support HA, slash the claim, right? They are the same thing in this problem. So basically we cannot say that there's a significant positive linear relationship between a mother's height and a daughter's height. Of course the one caveat here we want to talk about is the fact that what? This p-value, while not small enough in this particular case to reject the null hypothesis, isn't exactly large, right? It's about 6%, so it's pretty small. I mean, if we had run this test at a 10% significance level, we'd say there is a significant relationship, right? So it's just at the 1% significance level, 
or the 5% significance level that it's not significant, right? So in other words, it's kind of close. And perhaps the reason why we weren't able to reject here is because of the fact that we have such a small sample size, right? We don't have a lot of measurements. And that, of course, is going to lessen the power of our test to be able to reject a false null hypothesis. You know, the other thing is, of course, if you think about it, it kind of makes sense that tall mothers would generally produce taller daughters, right? I mean, of course, we know that parents contribute their DNA. And so, of course, if a family has tallness in its genes somehow, then, of course, you know, it would seem like children would be more likely to be tall. Now, of course, there's another parent in the picture that we haven't talked about here in this model. And that could, of course, uh, be part of the reason why we weren't able to show significance. But on the other hand, we also saw in previous problems that tall women generally prefer taller men. So you would assume that a tall mother would also have a taller husband, probably. And then in that case, you know, they might very well produce taller offspring. So because it makes logical sense and because the p-value here is not too large, it's pretty close to being significant, my guess is if we had a larger sample size, we would have been able to reject the null hypothesis and we would have been able to support this claim.